Have you ever wondered whether gradually increasing training volume during your training program could improve your results? For example, imagine if you followed a six week training block with 20 sets of quad work per week. Would progressively adding sets every couple of weeks lead to greater results? Or would sticking with a consistent 20 sets throughout deliver the same outcomes? Well, let's take a look at the potential advantages of volume progression in a group of trained women. A recent 2025 study by Ennis and colleagues carried out at the University of Tampa compared three different volume protocols in recreationally trained females. One group performed a constant weekly set volume for the quads over the course of 12 weeks with 22 sets per week. Another group increased their weekly volume by two sets every two week and they started at 16 sets and the third group increased their weekly volume by four sets every two weeks and they started at 18 sets per week. Now to help this all make sense I've included a graph to illustrate the progression of weekly sets over the 12 week study period. By the end of the intervention you can see that the three groups performed either 22, 26 or 38 sets respectively. The weekly sets were spread across three quad focused exercises, the leg press, the squat, and one of my personal favorites, the leg extension. Since proximity to failure plays a crucial role in muscle growth, the first two sets of each exercise were performed with around two reps in reserve. And to push things a little further, the final set of each exercise was taken all the way to task failure for maximum result. The participants trained twice per week over a 12 week period. And at the end of the intervention, muscle thickness of the vastus lateralis was re-measured at three specific sites along the upper leg, the 30, 50, and 70% lengths. In addition, the researchers also measured the vastus lateralis cross-sectional area at the 50% site. Now, for those of you who've been following my channel for a while, you've probably heard me mention measuring multiple sites along a muscle, and you might be wondering why this is so important. Well, measuring only one site can provide an incomplete or even a misleading picture of muscle growth. By including multiple sites, the researchers can capture changes across the entire muscle, giving us a more accurate and well-rounded understanding of how hypertrophy occurs. Now that we've gone over how the study was set up, let's take a look and see which a group of ladies achieved more muscle growth. Starting with the measurements of muscle thickness, the researchers summed up the total of the three sites measured and observed no statistical difference between the three groups. Now, just to make this super simple to understand, this means that all three groups achieved similar muscle growth after 12 weeks of training, regardless of the volume progression protocols used. However, based on the cross-sectional area data, and remember this was at the 50% site, the researchers observed a non-linear dose response relationship between volume and muscle growth. So what does that actually mean? Yes, I'll give that to you in English. Thank you. <laughs> Basically what the researchers found was that the four set progression group did outperform the constant group, meaning that the vastus lateralis muscle cross-sectional area was statistically larger when we compare these two groups. However, the changes between the four set progression group and the two set group were not statistically different. Interestingly, there were also no statistical differences between the two set group and the constant group. So what does this all mean and how should we be structuring our workout programs to maximize muscle growth? Well, before we all go racing off to increase our training volumes periodically, just like it's carried out in these studies, it's important to note that the previous research on this topic is somewhat conflicting. For example, another study by the same group of researchers found no added benefit when periodically increasing weekly set volumes compared to a constant volume group for summed muscle thickness measures. This previous study was conducted in males and explored even higher volumes than the present study, with the highest volume group working all the way up to 52 sets. Therefore, the differences in the population and the overall volume could possibly explain some of the differences between these studies. Regardless, taking these two studies together may warrant caution as to whether or not one should program periodic increases in training volume. That said, we also have to address the limitations of both these studies. For example, both studies lacked a non-exercise control group. Now, including a control group would allow researchers to assess the reliability and validity of their measurement tools and ensures that any changes observed are a result of the intervention and not some other variable. Furthermore, this study only involved weekly volume of a single muscle group, the quads, and does not consider all other muscle groups being trained. Unfortunately, this limits the applicability of these research findings to 
real world full body training programs, not to mention the major time constraints of performing such high volumes for whole body training. Ultimately, the question we all have to ask ourselves is, is the juice worth the squeeze? So here are my final takeaways. Number one, make sure that you start with an adequate baseline volume. For example, something you'll notice with all of my hypertrophy based programs is the inclusion of at least 10 to 20 sets per muscle group per week, or at least on those muscle groups that we want to see grow as starting too low may actually limit the potential for growth. Number two, progress your volume gradually, but it doesn't need to be excessive. Small controlled increases of one to two sets every few weeks are likely sufficient to optimize growth as we've observed in this paper. Number three, monitor diminishing returns as more isn't always better. Watch out for signs of overtraining like excessive muscle soreness, fatigue, and reduced performance. These may indicate the program has exceeded your ability to recover. Number four, take an individualized approach as some people tend to respond better to higher or lower volumes. Personally, I start out with a moderate approach and I adjust volume based on an individual's progress, feedback, and recovery. And number five, focus on overall progression, not just set volume. And here's why. While we know that volume is important, it's only one factor for muscle growth. Consistently increasing your load, improving your exercise technique, and maintaining a high level of effort or your proximity to failure are equally critical for long-term growth. Now, if you're looking to take your fitness journey to the next level, consider exploring Be A Fit, our comprehensive evidence-based workout app designed to cater to all levels. With hundreds of programs available, you can choose routines that fit your goals, whether you're working out at home or in the gym. Be A Fit also offers a vast library of exercise demonstrations, the flexibility to adapt and modify your workouts as needed, and awesome volume tracking analytics. You'll also be able to stay motivated with regular program updates and a supportive community to help you achieve your fitness goals. Check us out by visiting us on the App Store. Thank you so much for watching today's video, guys. If you enjoyed this, please give it a like, subscribe to my channel, and I will see you in my next video.